Welcome to Business Nigeria, where we bring you the latest happenings in the world of business across the nation. I am Tulu Lokpe Ogunjobi. A warm welcome to you again now. Nigeria has had sluggish economic growth since the end of 2015, with the rate dropping to an estimated 3.0% in December 2015, leading the authorities to adopt an expansionary 2016 budget that aims to stimulate the economy. The Nigerian economy has been adversely affected by external shocks, particularly a fall in the global price of crude oil. Growth slowed sharply from 6.2% in 2014 to an estimated 3.0% in 2015. Inflation increased to a two digits. The sluggish growth is mainly attributed to a slowdown in economic activities, which has been adversely impacted by the inadequate supply of foreign exchange and aggravated by the foreign exchange restrictions. This has resulted in cuts in production and shedding of labor in some sectors. With the increasing policy concern over the decline in growth, the central bank has moved to reduce the cost of borrowing for government and the private sector to stimulate the economy. The Nigerian economy is set to have closed 2016 with its worst economic performance in more than 20 years as militant attacks on oil infrastructure tight liquidity in the foreign exchange markets and depressed private consumption has affected growth. The federal government has in turn been advised to engage the services of economic experts in order to tackle economic recession in the country. While reviewing last year's economic performance and the outlook for 2017, Managing Director of AfriInvest Ayak Chioke says Nigeria has enormous resources and human capital to get out of recession. Chioke urges the citizens to invest in the capital market. Today we can trade real-time online on all the shares that are listed in the market. But to get Nigerians, uh, Nigerian citizens to come, we need to make that system work even for initial public offers. And if we look at a way of wholesale reform, reforming the issuance process so that all the information we need to deposit those shares in your CSS account are obtained up front at the same time you're filling those forms. I have your bank account details, I have your phone number which is verified, I have your BVN, I can deposit your shares in, the, in your clearinghouse account and you can start trading the same day that you bought those shares. I think when you do that, you'll be able to get the average Nigerian have the confidence to go into the stock market and buy shares and sell shares because he'll be, he'll be able to do it the same way he does his bank account today. This was the recommendation by economists and experts at the Nigerian Economic Summit Group's Microeconomic Outlook for 2017. We need to create confidence in this economy or else those who have capital will continue to want a way. For as long as we can create confidence that we know where we are going, we know why we want to go there, and we know how we are going to get there in a manner that people can understand and they can accept. Then the pressures on the demand side could go down. Whilst we, issues like import substitution takes down your demand side, exports take up your supply side. We recognize the fact that the nation faces choices that must be made. We don't want choices that are made based on just gut feel. We want choices that are determined, that are focused, that are sure, that are based on evidence, that are that are that are aware of both the short, medium, and long-term implications of what we're doing. And that's why we believe that we should add this to all the um, evidence that is in the marketplace. Meanwhile, the World Bank has predicted that the Nigerian economy would rebound from recession and grow by 1% in 2017. The Multilateral Institute stated this in its January 2017 Global Economic Prospects Report. 
With me in the studio is the head of research, Nigerian Economic Summit Group. It's Dr. Olu Shegun Omi Shaki. Thank you very much for joining us to put some of this into perspective. Now, I want us to start this way. A lot of challenges were seen in 2016. We could identify that from the delay in the formation of the cabinet, um, the foil price hike, and some other challenges which we faced in the economy. Um, oil price definitely stayed low. In your assessment, TSA, we can go on and on. What do you think, how would you assess 2016 before we now move ahead to looking at the outlooks for 2017? Yeah, thank you very much. You see, 2016 is very, <clears throat> very, very unique because at the same period, the weakness of the structure of our economy was revealed. In the same period, the tax of the federal government in addressing some of these challenging external factors that we were facing also was made known. And at the same time, the global market oil price that we all rely on to push our growth also revealed how weak we had. So three factors coming in together in the same period, that was very huge. That was serious. So even if the government is trying to say, oh, let's see what we can do by responding well, you still have to know that the external factor, the oil price, was going down. And so your reserves going down also. And then the pressure on dollar then even if the government says we can see address that, it is obvious that fundamentally the structure of our economy is weak. We rely on oil for almost everything. Our productive base is weak. So, so that is just 2016 in summary. Hmm. So that was how it hit us below the belt. Yes. W was it that we didn't plan or uh, we didn't plan well? Or well, because, uh, yes, we know depend we depended so much on the oil and gas sector. But um, in all of this, we still had the agricultural sector. I think at, at that time, we would say the non-oil sector was actually improving. Yeah. So what now happened? Uh, there's no way for a long period of time a particular sector can keep driving the economy. What was happening to other sectors would also come for instance, we have agriculture. But even if you look at the agricultural sector in terms of growth, good. But if you look at the depth of that growth, it's very shallow. The value addition is weak also. So it's a matter of time. Agric also we cr we crawl and then start waiting for the main push. Don't forget that even though oil sector is not really contributing as such, maybe on the average of 10% to Nigerian GDP, but it's, a, it's, a, it's very strategic in driving other sectors. Yes. Yes. Indirectly, government gets the money, government spends. So when government's expenditure is going down, when the, the currency value is going down, something will happen to that sector, whether agric or manufacturing. Well, manufacturing has never been doing good so far, even before, re, before uh, recession. And that's why you could see a very serious, drastic fall in that sector during 2016. So this, these are the way those uh, factors are playing all together. And that is why we believe that we need to look inward. Hmm. We need to look inward. As, as we forge ahead, now, in all of this, now, inflation too, there wasn't friendly at all. Um, we, we left the 2016, we uh, sealed it up for our 18.55%, uh, an alarming one, which yeah. we did, you know. You know, and lots of fundamentals, hiking the price of um, electricity, um, uh, petroleum products, yeah. and some other, some of this. Well, what do you make of the, the inflation rate, which we started? Well, if you look at the genesis of this trend, this strong pressure on uh, on our economy, you notice that 2016 we had the problem with oil price, good. At the same time, we had the issue with the government not introducing the cabinet, not forming the cabinet in time, so that each of the ministries or departments or agencies will be able to look through and say, this is how I think I want to run my department. At the same time, this is the same year that the government was trying to implement some strategies. <clears throat> Look at the, the oil downstream. We, uh, we, we, we have an increase in oil price. Yeah. So these factors at the same time are coming together within that uh, era of recession. And so naturally you see a push in the, in the cost of uh, goods and services. And then if you remember what CBN has also been doing in trying to arrest the situation, then you will then see that the situation is not that easy because this is not like the typical inflation uh, system where too many monies are chasing okay. few goods. Yeah. This is a, a structural, fundamental, it's cost push. You cannot produce because you don't have the access to, you can't get the dollar, you can't, so you have to source from the black market. Your cost of production has increased. There is no electricity, there is no power, the transportation is down, so the cost of logistics, everything increased and then everything is pushed on 
on the, the final goods and services. So there is little or nothing that the CBN could do to bring it down drastically. But now we're 18.55, they are still trying. They are still trying. Yeah. Well, well, Doctor, let's go on this break now. We'll be back and I'll still have Dr. Lushegun or Omishak in here to give insight into some issues definitely surrounding an adjoint economy. Stay with us on Business Nigeria. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us on Business Nigeria. Yes, we've been discussing issues surrounding the Nigerian economy for 2016 past year and also projecting and looking forward uh, to 2017. A lot of outlook, a lot of positive uh, projections for Nigeria, but we need to really, really look at the fundamentals. And with me in the studio to help look at this is Dr. Olushego Mishakin, who's the head research in Nigerian Economic Summit Group. He's been giving uh, his views on this development. Now, now Doc, now 2017, is here today is the first day in the month of february the second month a lot of expectations on the corner now the economic recovery growth plan which is what everybody expects now to be launched what are your expectations what do you think needs to be done many have said um, there's a lot needs to be done about proactive implementation of structural reforms in all facets of this economy i don't know what you make of this i have read the outlook for national economic summit group and it's really really full now what are your expectations yeah <clears throat> the recovery plan uh is very necessary at this period um, and it looks at about 50 or 54 strategies what should the government do um, in collaboration with the private sector in fact, all the stakeholders, what should they do to make sure that at least we first recover from this trend and then project growth? Among these 54, there are about priorities. We have about 12 key priorities. These are mainly meant for quick wins. What should the government do in the short term? Don't forget this plan is a short term uh, plan. In other words, within two or three years, within this period of uh, political dispensation, what should the government do? And Several things were listed, <clears throat> and so I believe this is the right thing to do. But the problem we are facing is not unique. It has been with us for long. And so the question, the critical question is still on the implementation. Mm -hmm. Are we going to truly implement what this plan offers us? Are we going to synergize our efforts to look strictly into what we are to do? If we can do that, good. But what would the situation we find ourselves now um, look at look at the currency look at look, look at what we find in the forex market all efforts made by the central bank to abate this it seems not to be working this challenge seems to be growing on and on uh, the, the, the ordinary man on the streets can't even find food on the table look at the price of gas as we speak even as we don't even know what's going to happen to the price of pms it might be going up still ascribed to the issue of dollars forex that is what you experience when you rely solely, when an economy relies solely on the energy sector. And unfortunately, when such a sector is not diversified, mm. is not deepened, all we do is we, we don't even produce, we only extract oil and then we sell them out. So any shock in that line is a serious, is going to be very serious for such an economy. For instance, look at where the problem is coming from. Yes, we all know that our structure, our economic structure is so weak, so weak that you can't uh, really say this is these are the sectors and this is how the in terms of exportation very weak where of recent we've been having some kind of a, a way balanced structure in terms of income gdp you have uh, manufacturing however weak you have a greek you have services uh, about 50 percent and the rest good but in terms of exportation you have this same sector oil dominating with almost 98 percent and you have a greek process so if we have our greek cultural sector to be exports to be such that we have enough value addition. It will generate income, it will generate forex. Now, if you have any problem with the oil sector, we can still lean on the other uh, sector, but now we don't. Oil alone is a driving force of our forex. And by that implication, the driving force of the strength of our currency, 
and when your currency is weakened, your economy is gone. But, but looking at this agricultural sector, I would, I would like us to focus on, okay, let's look at agricultural manufacturing. These are very important sectors if we need to industrialize yes. this economy, yes. if we are to get it right. Yes. Now, um, reports shows that even the agriculture or maybe the agricultural process which we practice at the moment is basically crop production. Yeah. We still do a lot of importation of fishery, livestock, yeah. and all of that. Yeah. That's why I'm looking at it that like it is a process. When we talk of quick wins, what quick wins do we have for this agricultural sector? Even looking at our budget, what is the budget for the agricultural sector for 2017? Yeah. Well, let me start from the last part, last concern. Looking at our budget, you would uh, have the impression that where the budget is huge compared to the last uh 2016 and 2015 but in the real terms the budget is slower smaller than what we have because you are not going to be sp i mean sp uh spending naira in every cases you know you see have to you know have to look at the way of exchanges so yeah. the dollar rate is so bad that you know then coming to a greek you have said it gone are those days when a nation will pride itself in the ability to export cocoa you are not only exporting cocoa, you are exporting your employment. <laughs> you are exporting goods and services. Sincerely. You are increasing, you are putting pressure on importation. You know, in those days when Nigeria used to import every damn thing, everything, you import uh, anything at all, <coughs> anything. But now look at that sector. What the government can do is to improve that value creation. You create value. Is enough, enough is not just export getting everything and then push them out you create value and how do you do that look at the structure of uh, industrial clusters idea uh, mentorship and, and 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 the rest the idea the original idea was to say okay now we have uh, entrepreneurship everywhere how do we bring them together along the same line of commodities so that they have they are exposed to the same technology the same energy the same and the rest so that we can get something done from that perspective if you don't have such a thing being handled, being fixed, there is no way we can be talking about value addition. Because we all know that when you go to the farm, all you do is to just get everything in, in rough form and then export them. So what the government should be concentrating on now is not that crop production, mm -hmm. but value addition in this particular sector. Because the sector, even as, as at now, employs almost 70%. Yeah. The sector, again, is the leading sector in the non-oil in terms of export, in terms of job creation, anything. So imagine government laying emphasis on that value creation, value chain, so that people can come in and then we have more to give ourselves instead of only relying on importation. To, 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 to in that, to in that line, it, it brings me to some, I want to know what critical infrastructures do we really think government needs to invest in now let's look at the made in nigeria thing which we've been talking about i know the nesg has been in forefront pushing for made in nigeria products and all of that are you are you satisfied with the moves of government in achieving this are you are you really satisfied i know the nepc has been doing so many things mm -hmm. as the export promotion yeah. council you know even saying that we've not taken advantage of the agua and some of all of these processes that are on ground that we've not actually put them i'm, I'm looking at this like <laughs> Are we not going? Are we not going? We're going to crawl before we walk. Yeah, yeah. You know, we can't jump guns. To, <laughs> to be sincere, the government has been trying. Mm. This is the same period. You see, I was telling somebody that it becomes so difficult for you to achieve two goals at the same time. The first goal, you want to diversify your economy. Mm. In the period when you are facing serious recession, you need money, huge money, to diversify, and that's why you see the debt profile rising. So, we can't just see a sudden. Uh, uh, improvement in what we are asking the government to do and that's one of the reasons why government is coming with that plan so basic things that i think we can fix now we've said this several times especially during our summit that look at the policy environment look at the regulatory environment look at the uh, the legal environment and then look at the infrastructure aspect in the in terms of policy there's some policy that we can enact instantly now within few months or within a year that will give the external investors who are waiting a serious signal that we are we mean business if you send the signal to everybody that we don't know what we are doing we are even confused 
build roads, build anything you want to do, nobody will come. Go to India, go to any of these countries. Are you telling me they have so, a superb infrastructure? No, but consistency in policy, focused. And that's what I believe that this plan will drive. If indeed we can follow this brand uh, for the next three years, I think something will change. The heat of doing business, will improve because this is of doing business is not just so all about rule and they are just little little things that matter how long does it take you to register how long does it take you to settle disputes among yourself how long does it take the government to collect these are basic things. they are not infrastructure as it were so if we can tackle that the same model india was following if i go to a time when india looked critically at the uh, the, the report of his of doing business and said we are going to hammer on this we're going to focus on this and the focus one by one and the more they do it, the more you are, you are developing, the more you are getting things right. So I think those are the things that government can, for now, be looking at that can deliver. I, 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 I know, I know def there's no how we're going to talk about this. Yes, we've talked about it one way or the other too. That's the Forex, the, 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 the Forex challenge, which remains very, very important, particularly in running mm. uh, this economy and businesses. Now, talking about confidence in investors, many have said that it's because we have different types of rates. That's why some investors are so scared of coming in. Yes, central bank might not accept that, but what we have is, it's, it's, it's outrageous what you have in the interbank and the parallel market. And today we hear expect here is, but the thing is, what in strict terms, how can we actually reactivate our forex, our forex system? I think there is a <coughs> challenge. Yeah. In, 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 there's a challenge as we face, which we face, and we must address it to boost and rebound, re reactivate this economy. You know, unfortunately, when you listen to people, what people are busy talking about is the uh, different approaches that the uh, central bank is using. This is right, this is not right. We have many rates, we are good. But on the long term, we need to ask ourselves, even if we have one rate, what would that signal to the prospective investor? So I think the fundamental challenge is for us to ask ourselves, how do we generate Forex? Mm. Because the problem is that the demand for Forex is higher than supply, basic. Mm. So mm. if you can answer that question, naturally all these multiple rates will disappear. These approaches are like emergency approach. You can just begin to test so many things. I'm not justifying that it's good we begin to have multi, but I'm more concerned in what we are doing to get the fundamentals right. I must thank you for your time, Dr. Olushego Mishaki, Ed Research, now Joint Economic Summit Group, giving insights into these issues. Thank, thank you. you for joining us on Business Nigeria. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, time flies. That's all we have for you today on Business Nigeria. Join us another time for more incisive and topical issues. I am Tony Lokwe Ogunjobi. I leave you with the figures of the exchange as it stands today. On behalf of the entire production crew, thank you for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>